Hello my dear lovely students so hope you all are in best of your health now this session is all about the topic which is frog now you know the frog is also a part of your syllabus so today we will be talking about the morphology and as well as the anatomy of frog both the things we will be looking at it we'll be dealing with all of this yes that too in detail so this is your chapter which is a structure organization in case of animals and in this structure organization in animals bodies what we are discussing today is the frog clear so let's start yes so cockroach we have already done so hope you have seen that session also morphology and anatomy here today we will be dealing with the frogs right and basically their morphology anatomy both the things we have to deal as per your syllabus now let's start you know frog frogs are those organisms which are placed under the category of amphibians yes they are also vertebrates but they are kept under the category of the amphibians because they have a dual mode of life they can live in water as well as on land the characteristic features of the amphibian if you look at these organism they are having lots of feature which are similar to the mammals right they also have cranial nerve in fact in these organism 10 pair of cranial nerves are present and how many cranial nerves do we have we are having 12 different 12 pairs of cranial nerves these are the organisms which uh, these are organisms are uh, these organisms they are carnivore in nature clear they feed on insect they are they are having a long uh, uh, bifurcated tongue uh, present in the body they are having a well developed sensory system the lungs is also present in them they are having a well developed kidney they do have a ureter they do have a urinary bladder in now we will be looking at each and every feature one by one so let's start so the, the topic which we are dealing is the frog frog right what is the scientific name of frog scientific name of frog is rana tigrina what is it it is the rana tigrina rana tigrina before going deep into this topic yes this is also a chordate this is also a chordate and let's look at the uh, uh, classification of these organisms the first thing is the kingdom animalia kingdom animalia yes yes right uh, is this correct so it belongs to the kingdom animalia phylum you know what will be the phylum phylum chordata phylum chordata so these are chordates these are not non chordate let's talk about the sub phylum like i had told you what is the sub phylum it's the vertebrata it is the vertebrata right so they are having a proper well developed vertebral column class you know what we have talked about the class so class also what's the class amphibia amphibia means they are having dual nature that means they can live on land as well as on water next is the order let's talk about the order order is anura frogs are anurans let's talk about the genus genus is your rana let's talk about the species is tigrina tigrina this is the classification now if you look at these organisms they are having dual life dual mode of life dual mode of life that means they can live on land they can live on land as well as they can live in water water these are those organisms who do not have a constant body temperature so constant body temperature no constant body temperature their body temperature is not constant 
that means they are not endotherms then what are these organisms these organisms they are ectotherm they are ectotherm what's another name poikilotherms poikilotherm their body temperature doesn't remain constant right but their, as their body temperature doesn't remain constant so you know that these are those organisms who can adapt to the harsh environmental condition by hibernation and aestivation so they show hibernation hibernation and aestivation so what do we mean by hibernation and aestivation hibernation means winter sleep winter sleep that means during the harsh winter they undergo hibernation so they you will not be able to see them because they are hibernating and similarly in the uh, summer condition in the this is termed as summer sleep this is the summer that means in the harsh winter condition they become inactive during this period the respiration occur through the skin Now, one of the very important feature because these organisms they can live in land as well as in water the one very important feature is that how do they respire do they have gills when they are present in water or do they have or they are having lungs when they are present in the air you have to remember they are having lungs the lungs are not well developed then how do they respire in water they respire in the water with the help of their uh, outermost surface with the help of diffusion they show the respiration so what we are doing is we will be looking at each and every points related to the frogs and simultaneously buddies we will be um, reading your ncert also because what i want is each and every line which is there in ncert should be clear to you okay so first point they can live on both land and the fresh water as i have told you amphibian they come under the phylum chordata now most common species in india is it is a rana tigrina their color also varies right they have a very good capacity that they can show the change in the colors i can no i don't have that diagram so they can change the their color also that means to protect themselves from the uh, predators they can show the uh, change their body color also they do not have a constant body temperature their body temperature varies with the temperature of the environment such and, and or, <coughs> organism are termed as cold blooded ectotherms or poikilotherms you might have also noticed the change in the color of the frog when they are in grasses when they are in grasses they are green in color and when they are uh, on a rock they are brownish in color so they are have a, having the ability to change color and hide them this is termed as camouflage right so let's write that also camouflage another feature flash clear clear yeah. now moving on to the next let's see the protective coloration is termed as mimicry right this is termed as protective coloration for the protection if they are changing the color mimicry they also frogs are not seen during the peak summer and the winter during this period they take shelter in the deep burrows to protect them from extreme heat this is termed as sim, uh, summer sleep otherwise they are termed as if they are undergoing this activity in winter to prevent themselves from harsh winter they are termed as hibernation dan 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 clear let's look at the topic which is the morphology 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 means external character morphology means external character now if they if you look at their body their body is divisible into two different parts how many parts two different part one part is termed as head region head region and second part is termed as trunk region trunk region clear and in these organism the neck is absent neck is absent what is the next point the next point is here the two pairs of legs are present 
टू पेयर्स ऑफ लिम्स आर प्रेजेंट टू पेयर्स ऑफ लिम्स नाउ द टू पेयर्स ऑफ लिम्स आर योर फोर लिम फोर लिम्स एंड द हाइंड लिम्स हाइंड लिम्स one pair of four limbs see these are the four limbs present and these are the hind limbs present if you look at the four limb four limb the four toes are present how many four toes are present whereas in hind limb five toes are present clear in case of four limb that you will re will be reading that later on also in case of male copulatory pads are present in the first digit of the four limb so they are having copulatory pads so copulatory pads help in copulation now these organisms they release female releases their eggs in water the male releases sperms in the water so fertilization happens in uh, uh, water but they show a process of pseudo copulation that means male will come and sit over the female this is termed as a pseudo copulation in that respect female will release egg at the same time male will also release sperms in the water fertilization will occur it will lead to the formation of egg at one particular time female releases 2500 to 3000 eggs sperms are released later on fertilization will occur after the fertilization what we will get is a zygote ultimately it transforms uh, transform itself into the tadpole and tra tadpole into the adult that we will see in the development clear is it clear if you look at the uh, hind limb hind limb is more muscular hind limb is more muscular and hind limb is very big right so hind limb is more muscular more muscular muscular and long and it is long also and because of the long a uh, hind limb they can they can show the leaping that means they can show jump from one place to another so with the with the help of four limb they can walk they can jump they can leap etc done clear now what else do they have they are having a pair of eyes a pair of eyes right in case so in these eyes because these organism they have to live in what they live in water also as they live in water so they have to see in water so to prevent that that water should not enter into their eyes they are having third eyelid which is nictitating membrane present nictitating membrane is present nictitating membrane so what's another name of nictitating membrane third eyelid third eyelid what do they have is the third eyelid clear third eyelid now see look at this these are the eyelids present so if another membrane is present which covers their eye that is the third eyelid now what else is present you will see here a pair of nostrils are present what do they have a pair of nostrils pair of nostrils nostrils guys can you see the structure over here right what is this this is a ear present so here in these organism external ear is absent external ear is absent that means they are having middle ear and the internal ear so here the tympanum tympanum is present directly here what do they have is the tympanum tympanum clear what is this tympanum so here i am writing tympanum is present tympanum is the one which is exposed to the outside done clear bodies clear if you look at their uh, uh limbs they are clawed clawed and they are having skin present over here they are webbed so 
I am writing over here. They are digits are webbed. Digits are webbed. Now, what do we mean by webbed digit? See, look at look at this. Here, look at this. These are the digits. And if I'm saying webbed, that means a membrane is present over here. This is the webbing. What do we call this? Webbing. Web is present. Why it is required? So it acts. It helps in the swimming. It helps in the swimming, right? So they help in swimming. Let's do the NCRT reading. Now, have you ever touched a frog? Yes. You know, uh, if you'll touch a frog, you will see that they are very much slippery. They are smooth. The reason is the body is covered with mucus. This is for the protection and second for the gaseous exit. That is the presence of mucus. The skin is always maintained in moist condition. So, they are having mucus present all over the body surface. The very important feature is have you ever tried to catch a frog? If yes, then do let me know in the comment section. So, it is they are very slippery. It is very difficult to catch them. Now, dorsal side of the body is uh, olive green in color. See, their color, their everything, it varies from one species to another. Olive green with the dark irregular spots. On the ventral side, skin is uniformly pale yellow. The frog never drinks water. Please remember, frog never drinks water. How do they take water? They also require water. So water they take from the environment with the help of the skin. So the water diffuse with the help of process diffusion from outside into the uh, uh, body. Clear? Done? Now, body is divisible into head and trunk. Done, 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 done. Clear? Next is neck and tail are absent. Right, we didn't talk about tail also. Above mouth, a pair of nostrils is present. Eyes are bulged and covered by the nictitating membrane. Another name is third eyelid, nictitating membrane. That protects them while in water. On either side of the eye, a membranous tympanum ear receives sound signal. The fore limb and hind limb helps in swimming, walking, leaping and burrowing. It helps in swimming, it helps in walking, leaping and burrowing. Why burrowing? Why burrowing is it required? Burrowing is required because buddies at the time of hibernation or estivation, they have to live in deep burrows. The hind limb have five digits. They are larger, muscular than four limbs. That end in four digits. So four limbs, four, F4, four, four. So four uh, to, uh, digits are there. So, I'll give you one example. <laughs> okay, I, I, I have one thing in mind. In many countries, frogs are eaten. <coughs> in fact, their hind limbs, they are eaten because they are very much muscular. Feeds have webbed digits which helps in swimming. They exhibit sexual dimorphism. Yes. Frogs exhibit sexual dimorphism. As I have told you, in case of male frog, male frog produce a particular sound. What is that sound? Trrr, trrr, trrr. You remember? They produce a sound which is a trrr, trrr, trrr sound. So that sound is produced not for you, not for anyone. This is produced for the female. So male, their vocal cord is developed so that they can produce a characteristic sound to attract females. Done? Done, 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 done. Now, in another thing is that the forelimb of male, this is a, this, here the four digits are present. The forelimb of male, the copulatory pads are present. Okay. Male frogs can be distinguished by the presence of the sound producing vocal sac and copulatory pad on the first digit of the forelimb, which are absent in case of female frog. This is very important. Very, very, very important. Clear? Sexual dimorphism is seen in these organisms as well. Done? Isn't it easy? I guess this is super easy. In fact, this whole topic, you will find lots of things are there which are very much similar to us. Let's move on to the next topic, which is the anatomy. So, in the anatomy, let's directly move on to this structure. Clear? Now, <coughs> first here, we are starting with the first topic which is the digestive system which topic we are starting 
the digestive system one so digestive system so they are carnivores are they herbivore carnivore they are carnivore sorry so these organisms they are carnivore carnivore right and if you look at the length of the digestive system is smaller as compared to us because they are carnivore herbivores they are having long la long uh, short uh, intestine the intestine is long the reason is the more reabsorption here they are carnivores so their intestine length is small intestine length of intestine is less clear done now first thing is how does a frog captures the food now remember frog captures food Through bifurcating tongue, bifurcating tongue. That means their tongue is bifurcated. Bifurcated means they are having. I'll show you. Oh, see, bifurcated. Their tongue is bifurcated. Right? It is like this. Right? So this helps in capturing the prey. Right? Now what will happen? Food will enter from the pharynx. Here, the mouth will be present. Let's label. Here, the mouth will be present. Guys, please understand this topic. See, I'm not saying you, I'm not telling you to uh, cram everything, but understand that is enough because it it is very easy, very much similar. We have completed human physiology, and they're very much similar to similar to human. So here, the next is the pharynx is present. the food from the mouth will enter into the pharynx from pharynx it will enter into the esophagus clear are you getting this point it will enter into the esophagus then into the stomach then into the intestine then into the rectum and it comes out with the help of a cloacal aperture so very important they are having cloacal aperture very important point cloacal aperture so what is a cloacal aperture we do not have clo cloacal ap aperture we are having anus they do not have anus they are having cloacal aperture cloaca cloacal aperture so what is the use of this cloacal aperture cloacal aperture helps in removing or it is a common opening what is this this is a common opening for undigested food undigested food urine that me or the nitrogenous waste because it varies also i'll tell you how nitrogenous waste and sperms and eggs right now listen very carefully frog will eat from the mouth food will enter into the pharynx then it will enter into the esophagus it will enter into the stomach in case of stomach like that of us what do they have is the hcl right hcl is there along with the hcl what is present the protein digesting enzyme like we are having protein digesting enzymes protein digesting enzyme hcl will be there protein digesting enzyme both are present then food will enter into the intestine from intestine the food will enter into a structure where it, is, it will be stored that is a rectum undigested and it will come out through the cloacal aperture so if you look at their uh, excretory system so the ureter also opens into the cloaca here here if you look at the genital system there also opening occurs through the common pore which is the cloaca so cloaca is a common opening we are having a common opening 
we do not have a common ovum in case of male urine and sperm comes from a common duct so it is urinogenital duct but in case of female the separate openings are there here in both the male and female uh, the cloaca is present then what else do they have they are having some digestive glands yes they are having digestive glands also so anyone would like to name you can see here in the diagram also you will see the liver is present and what does a liver secrete liver secretes bile bile pigments are there bile salts are there bile pigments for example the bilirubin and bilirubin these are the excretory waste bile salts are there which helps in the emulsification of the fat right and along with the liver they are having a gall bladder also so what's the function of the gall bladder we have discussed in uh, digestion and absorption it helps in the storage of the food or uh, storage of bile clear done liver is done now other than that they are having the pancreas the major digestive gland pancreas in case of pancreas the acini cells are there which secrete digestive enzyme digestive enzyme means one which helps in the digestion of proteins the carbohydrate done clear clear in these org organisms also the endocrine part is also there but here just i am talking about the uh, digestive system so i am talking about the acini part right so the digestive part is termed as the one which helps in the secretion of the digestive juices that is the that is the acini cells and next one is the islet of langerhans which secretes the hormone that we will see later on clear now let's do a quick reading so all the uh, uh, body cavity of the frog accommodate different organ systems such as digestive circulatory respiratory nervous excretory and reproductive we'll be looking at each of these structure only a brief overview is there in your syllabus so everything we have to discuss the digestive system consists of an alimentary canal and digestive glands alimentary gland the short because the frogs are carnivore because they are carnivore hence the length of intestine is reduced the mouth opens into a buccal cavity that leads to the esophagus through pharynx yeah esophagus is a short tube that open into the stomach which in turn continue with the intestine rectum and finally open outside to the cloaca liver secretes bile stored in the gall bladder pancreas a digestive gland produce pancreatic enzymes each and every line guys we have already done now next pancreas contain digestive enzyme food is captured by the bilobed tongue you remember bifurcated bilobed tongue digestion take place by the action of the hcl and the gastric juices secreted from the wall of the stomach partially digested food called the skyme is passed from the stomach to the first part of the small intestine here also the du duodenum is present duodenum receives the bile from the gall bladder pancreatic juice from the pancreas through a common bile duct bile emulsifies the fat pancreatic juices digest up carbohydrate and protein final digestion take place in the intestine digestive food is absorbed by the numerous finger like folds in the inner wall of intestine termed as a villi and the microvilli the undigested food removes from the rectum and pass it out through the cloaca now listen come back to this diagram once again here the digestion starts in the uh, stomach region here you know the gastric and the digestive enzyme the gastric enzyme is present like that of human here also the food is termed as chyme in the mouth it is bolus in the stomach it is chyme right in the intestine it is chyle depending on the ph now here in the intestine the gall bladder opens which is which is shown over this side but it actually opens over here this is an extended form otherwise this is whole wrapped structure so this will open over here this releases the bile similarly pancreas also opens over here and bile is released with the help of a common bile duct you remember and here the pancreas will also release a digestive enzyme the digestion will occur ultimately the undigested food will be stored in the rectum and from the cloaca it will come out done clear oh let's talk about the next structure which is a respiratory system so let's talk about the respiratory system another super whooper easy peasy lemon squeezy topic respiratory system so how does a frog respire 
frog show three different type of respiration one is with the help of skin second is the buccopharyngeal and second with the help of lungs third one with the help of lung right major leave in frog is there in water as well as on land in both the cases how do they respire they respire with the help of skin in fact when they are sleeping either a summer sleep or a winter sleep they respire through the moist skin buccopharyngeal respiration they are having a buccal pharyngeal respiration with the help of a mouth cavity the respiration occur you all must have seen the many time when a frog is sitting frog keeps on doing you know what is this the buccopharyngeal respiration so in these organisms lungs are poorly developed lungs are poorly developed poorly developed so very less respiration occurs through lungs so with the help of a buccopharyngeal what they do is they engulf air in their mouth and when they engulf air with the help of the lining of the buccal cavity the respiration occurs clear now here in this diagram you can see oxygen comes in carbon dioxide goes out from the skin and with the help of lungs also here from the mouth cavity also done clear whereas when we talk about the tadpole tadpole respire with the help of gills start pole respire oh, gills how does start pole respire start pole respire through gills okay very less now frog respire on land and water by two different method water skin act as aquatic respiratory organ cutaneous respiration dissolved oxygen in water is exchanged between the uh, skin by diffusion on land the buccal cavity skin and the lungs act as a respiratory organ respiration by lung is termed as a pulmonary respiration the lungs are uh, elongated pink colored sac like structure present on the upper part of the trunk region thorax air enters through the nostril into the buccal cavity then into the lungs very important line during estivation and hibernation the gaseous exchange takes place clear now the skin respiration occur buccopharyngeal and the lungs with the help of lungs also the respiration so please remember these terminologies also that skin this is termed as cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration and this one is termed as pulmonary respiration pulmonary respiration pulmonary clear now moving on to the next is circulatory these organisms they are having a well developed circulatory so do they have blood yes they do have blood blood is present in them so let's write circulatory system so they are having blood vascular vascular system they are having well developed lymphatic system lymphatic system they are having some portal system also portal system two type of portal systems are present in case frog one is the hepatic portal system hepatic portal system second is the renal portal system portal all these things we have to discuss one by one now first let's talk about the blood vascular system we'll see in this organism a heart is present mesodermal heart let's write 
let's start with the blood vascular <sighs> blood vascular system so first let's talk about blood yes in this organism blood is present blood the so blood is made up of two different components one is plasma we also have plasma in blood and second is the corpuscles what is the another name of corpuscles another name of corpuscles is the formed element formed elements here yeah. the formed elements include what this include your erythrocyte similarly here also erythrocytes are present another name is the red blood cells clear the next one is the leukocyte that is the wbc third one is the thrombocyte thrombocyte that is the platelets that is the platelet done here yeah. can we proceed further now here what do they have is a muscular heart muscular heart present on the anterior side of the body right this is also mesodermal in origin they are mesodermal in origin which layer forms it mesodermal so they are muscular heart this muscular heart is covered by pericardium pericardium heart is covered by pericardium a layer around heart what's the name name is pericardium done done clear can we proceed further now here these organism heart is three chamber three chamber very important so what do they have they are having two auricle and one ventricle two auricle and one 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 ventricle there because of this there is mixing of i'll show you how mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood deoxygenated blood point clear mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood do you want to have a look yes so let's have a look i am drawing a, a basic diagram of the heart to make you understand the topic so i'm not giving you an actual diagram of heart it is there in your book so, so you can refer over there but for understanding this is super important so what is this this is the atria right which atria this is the right atria this is the left atria right atria left atria this is the ventricle this is the ventricle now uh, the right atria receives deoxygenated blood so this is how it receives this is an depiction
it receives deoxygenated blood what does it receive deoxygenated blood from body body tissue clear deoxygenated blood from body tissue now deoxygenated blood from the body tissue enters into this sac like structure this is an extra you can say chamber present now name of this extra chamber is the sinus venosa sinus venosus sinus venosa extra chamber from sinus venosus it will enter into the right atria from right atria the blood will enter into the ventricles blood will enter into the ventricles are you getting the point now look at this the left atria you have done the chapter body fluid and circulation with me now hope guys you remember now left atria will receive blood from the lungs they are having lungs so they will receive the blood from the lungs right the oxygenated blood which type of blood will it be the oxygenated here which type of blood deoxygenated so this blood from both the atria will come into the ventricle in the ventricle there will be mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood clear and from ventricles the blood will enter into another small chamber which is the truncus arteriosus or truncus here truncus arteriosus then it will be supplied to each and every body part of the tissue that means body part will receive the mixed blood oxygenated and deoxygenated blood two extra chamber sinus venosus truncus arterius conus arterius any word you want the truncus arterius that's fine the truncus arterius or con conus arterius or this is a sinus venous clear <coughs> look at the structure here you can see a muscular heart is present which is three chambered three chambered heart is present yeah so let's talk about the lymphatic system lymphatic system so here also the lymph is present what do they have is lymph present where less protein protein is less and no rbc less protein and no rbc are these are your ncrt this all also circulates in the proper lymphatic system right they have a proper lymphatic system present in the body clear clear let's talk about the portal system portals these organisms they are having the renal portal system so what do they have a the renal portal system See, what do we mean by portal system portal system means there is a communication or that means circulation is occurring between two different organs the first is between the intestine here in this case the two structures are involved that is intestine detail is not required intestine and the kidney the food which is absorbed from the intestine right from the intestine food will absorbed this will go to the kidney for the filtration 
directly. This will go to the fit rather than going to the heart first, they are going directly to the kidney, right? For the filtration to occur. Similarly, the next is the hepatic portal system. Hepatic portal. Second portal system is the hepatic portal system. This is the first portal system. This is the second portal system. Here in the second portal system, the communication is between the intestine, intestine and the communication is between the liver. That means blood from the intestine will go into the liver for the detoxification. So this communication between the two organs, otherwise normally in each and every circulation, heart is involved. Here the heart is also there, but first there is a communication between the two different organs. Done. Let's quickly do the NCRT reading. A vascular system in frog is well developed. They are having closed type of circulation. Frogs have lymphatic system also. The blood vascular system involves heart, blood vessel, blood. Lymphatic system consists of lymph, lymph channel and lymph node like that of us. The heart is a muscular structure situated in upper part of the cavity. It has three chamber, two atria and one ventricle covered by membrane which is a pericardium. A triangular structure sinus venosus joins the right ear. We have done this. It receives the blood through the major vein, which is the vena cava. Right? So we have done this in the structure also. What's the name of this? This is this is the vena cava. This is the vena cava. So we have are having superior vena cava, which carries the blood from the upper body part. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, which carries the blood, the deoxygenated blood from the lower body part. The ventricle open into a sac, conus arteriosus, conus arteriosus or the uh, truncus arteriosus, both names are same. The blood from the heart is carried to all part of the body by the arteries. The vein collects blood from the different part of the body to the heart from the venous. There is an arterial system in the venous system like that of us. Special venous connection occurs between the liver and intestine and kidney and the lower part of the body are present in the frog. The former is called hepatic portal system, second is a renal portal system. The blood is composed of plasma and cell. The blood cells are RBC, erythrocyte, WBC, leukocytes and platelets. RBCs are nucleated, contain R red pigment, which is the hemoglobin. The lymph is different from blood. It lacks few protein in RBC. The blood carries nutrients, gases, water to respective side during circulation. Circulation of blood is achieved by the pumping action of the muscular heart. Yeah. Hope each and every line which is there in NCRT is very much clear. So like your Chavi ma'am has promised you, we will be getting good marks by reading the NCRT also, which I am doing in these sessions. Are reading your NCRT also and we are I am giving you the proper knowledge of each and every topic as well. Done? Happy? Now <laughs> let's move on to the next structure which is the excretory system. So, excretory system also is well developed in these uh, organisms. What do they have is dark red bean color structure. Yes, they are having a bean color structure which is termed as kidney. A pair of kidneys are present. A pair of kidneys are present. They do have an adrenal gland. They have an adrenal gland over the anterior part of the kidney. They do have adrenal gland. Now, from each of these kidneys, the ureter arise. Here also the nephrons are present. The ureter arise. Clear? Now, this ureter opens here. Guys, can you see? This is the opening of ureter. And ultimately, this, this is a cloaca. It opens into the cloaca and from cloacal aperture, it comes out. Here, the digestive system, that is a rectum, also opens. One more structure is present, which is the urinary bladder. So, urinary bladder helps in the storage. For the temporary storage of the urine, this is required. If you look at the frogs, frogs are ureotelic. Frogs are ureotelic. But when you look at the tadpole, tadpole live in water, they are ammonotelic. Let's do a quick NCRT reading. Elimination of nitrogenous waste is carried out by the well-developed excretory system. They are having a well-developed excretory system. Pair of kidneys, ureter, cloaca, urinary bladder is present. These are the compact dark bean like structure situated at uh, little posteriorly to the body cavity on the both side of the vertebral column. Little posteriorly it is present.
kidney is composed of several structure and functional unit urinary ferrous tubule or the nephrons two ureter emerge from the kidney in the male frog the ureter acts as a urinary duct this we have already discussed they are having uh, ureter is urino it carries urine also it carries sperm also which directly opens into the cloaca in case of female the ureter and ovary that i'll show you female we have to do you can leave this point here i'll discuss you later on a thin walled urinary bladder is present ventral to the rectum which also opens into the cloaca the frog excrete urea ureterally the excretory waste is carried out from the kidney where it is separated and clear but one should you know one thing you should know the uh, uh, tadpole is a monotelic clear okay very 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 important part of this chapter that is the nervous system the nervous system is also well developed in these organisms they are having see if we talk about the control and coordination two things are there one is a chemical control and coordination and second is a nervous control and coordination so let's have a look control and coordination control and coordination so these organism control and coordination occurs through two different way the first is the neural control yes nervous control the nervous control what do they have is the well developed central nervous well developed central nervous what else they are having cranium cranium is the brain box what else is present they are having a well developed cranium that is a brain box they are having 10 pair of cranial nerves how many do we have 12 pair 12 no yeah so they are having brain as well as spinal cord two structures central nervous system means structures are there one is the brain spinal guys again i am saying each and every line there in ncert we are discussing So their brain is composed of three different fore brain mid brain fore brain mid brain and hind three different structures are there here yeah. so fore brain in these organism they further differentiate into olfactory lobes olfactory lobes are there here yeah. olfactory lobes are there what else cerebral hemisphere they are having two cerebral hemisphere hemisphere and the third one is the dyne they are having well developed dyne here in case of us the two cerebral we have done that in neural control and coordination remember guys the two cerebral hemisphere are there which are joined by the band of the nerve fiber which is termed as corpus callosum here corpus callosum is absent the cerebral hemisphere mid brain further differentiate to here optic lobes are present two optic lobes are present whereas when the so when we talk about the hind brain here cerebellum cerebellum the next part is medulla is present 
ज्यादा स्ट्रक एवरीथिंग इज सो वेल डेवलप्ड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द केमिकल कोऑर्डिनेशन केमिकल कोऑर्डिनेशन यस दे शो केमिकल कोऑर्डिनेशन हाउ डू दे शो केमिकल कोऑर्डिनेशन बॉडीज हाउ डू दे शो केमिकल कोऑर्डिनेशन दे शो केमिकल कोऑर्डिनेशन बिकॉज दे आर हैविंग एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम वेल डेवलप्ड एंडोक्राइन that means hormones so in that respect what all structures are present in them they are having hypothalamus they are having pituitary they are having adrenal pancreas that you know one thyroid next one parathyroid all these glands are present. all these glands are present clear and the function you know their metamorphosis is also respond uh, it's because of the hormone thyroxin so let's move further let's do a quick ncrt review the system control and coordination is involved in the frog include the neural and the endocrine gland chemical control is endocrine gland chemical coordination is achieved situated by the endocrine gland they are pituitary thyroid parathyroid thymus pineal pancreatic adrenal gonad nervous system is organized into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Ooh, peripheral nervous system is also there. In fact, sympathetic and parasympathetic is also there. autonomous sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Ten pairs of cranial nerves. Brain is enclosed in a bony structure. Brain box. Brain is divided into forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain include olfactory lobe, paired cerebral hemisphere, unpaired uh, diencephalon. Here, yeah. midbrain consists of optic lobes. Hindrib consists of cerebellum, medulla oblongata. the medulla oblongata passes so this is a medulla oblongata with the help of a foramen there is a there is a pore over here foramen magnum it articulates with the it communicate with the spinal right communicate with the spinal cord clear right so peripheral nervous system is also well developed this is the nervous control central nervous system and second you pns is also developed in that ans is there in case of ans you know the sympathetic and parasympathetic you have done this chapter right parasympathetic so sympathetic is the one which is activated at the time of fight and flight clear and the parasympathetic is activated in normal condition we go to the next is sensory or they are having sensory organ sensory organ or touch or taste yes with the help of a tongue they can taste the uh, food which they are eat third thing is they are having the optic eyes are present which are present in the optic lobes the eyes are present the tympanum or the ear is also present in them clear out of all these the ear as well as the eye they are more developed there are rest structures such as the touch taste sense organs these are the uh, nerves ending the blind nerves endings which are present clear okay frog has a different type of sense organ of touch sensory papillae taste bud smells are there clear vision eyes and hearing tympanum is present clear out of these eyes and internal ears are well developed organized in a structure rest all are cellular aggregate of the nerve eyes in the frogs we have discussed spherical structure which are situ situated in the orbits of the skulls orbits of the skulls they are situated these are simple eyes possessing only one unit internal ear external ear is absent only tympanum is seen from externally the ear is an organ of hearing as well as balancing after this diagram here you can see here the eyes are there and this is the tympanum rest all uh, for the 
taste receptors are also there touch receptors are also there all the receptors are but they are just nerve ending these are the one which are very well developed now eyes are present in a socket socket they are present in socket okay okay doki easy peasy moving on to the last part of this chapter uh, is the reproductive first let's talk about the male reproductive this is here this is a diagram of a male reproductive in case of male reproductive system they are having a pair of testes a pair of testes are there now the sperms will be produced don't look at the diagram first understand the topic so a pair of testes is present here what will happen sperm production what will happen sperm production what will happen sperm production sperms will be produced clear sperms produced now from here from the pair of testes sperms will enter into the vasa differential vasa efferent clear from the vasa efferent sperm will enter into the bidder's canal very important bidder's canal from bidder canal it will enter into the ureter they are also termed as urino genital ducts because it carries sperm as well as it will enter into ureter then it enter into the cloaca from cloaca with the help of a cloacal aperture it comes cloacal aperture it clear is this point clear very easy what do they have is pair of testes vasa efferentia bidder's canal ureter cloaca and cloaca c can you see the testes they are present this color yellow in color testes here the fat bodies are also attached to it you will see here 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 these are the vasa efferent these are the vasa efferent then all of this they will empty into the bidder's canal right empty into the bidder canal bidder canal ultimately opens into the urino genital duct which is the ureter urino genital duct ureter this will open into the cloaca now this structure is termed as cloaca from cloacal aperture sperm will come that's it you have here testes vasa efferentia then bidder's canal this is the one which is a bidder's canal then urino genital duct ultimately into the uh, cloaca from cloaca to cloacal aperture now in this case the fem the male produces sounds and with the male produces sounds first a uh, tr 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 sounds right once it creates this sound female will be attracted she will uh, the male will hold the female with the help of copulatory pads present on the sorry this one present on the first digit of the forelimb because they are having just four digits of the forelimbs the help of first it will hold it and uh, with th that particular uh, process this is a pseudo copulation the female will release egg and then the sperm will will be released over it in the body clear yeah. then let's talk about the female reproductive system so guys can you see the ovaries are there ovaries are there right so let's talk about the female here productive system male reproductive so a pair of o a pair of ovaries ovaries the eggs will be released eggs eggs will be allowed to enter into ovary duct ovary duct is a funnel shaped funnel shaped 
this oviduct very important line this oviduct opens in oviduct see in case of male in case of male case of male uh the bidder canal opens into the urinogenital duct now look at this they are having separate ureter ureter can you see the separate ureter here the egg will be created in it in this from here the egg will travel into the oviduct which is a funnel shape if you look at the structure it is a funnel shaped structure the eggs will enter into the cloaca and from cloacal aperture it will reach. done clear so in case of female the ureter is not urinogenital duct right whereas in case of male ureter is urinogenital duct okay frogs have a well developed let's do ncert reading fast well developed male and female reproductive system male produces organ uh, well developed uh, testes are there which are found in adhere to the upper part of the kidney by a double fold of peritone they are present with a double fold of peritone vas differentia 12 to 12 in number 10 to 12 rise from the testes they open into a side and open into the bladder canal finally communicate with the urinary duct that comes out of the kidney open into the cloaca cloaca is a small medium chamber that is used to pass fecal matter urine to the exterior clear now female female reproductive include a pair of ovaries ovaries are situated near kidney there is no functional connection between kidneys and ovary a pair of ovary duct arises from the ovaries opens into a cloaca separately mature female how many eggs ov ova do they produce 2500 to 3000 i already told you now fertilization in this case is external take place in water development involve a larval stage which is a tadpole tadpole undergo metamorphosis and it will form the adult last line is written over here that frog is having lot of important beneficial to mankind because people in many uh, countries we are using them as food <laughs> yes we are using them as food and in fact there are many countries where frogs they are consumed their juices they are consumed their shakes are consumed consider that i i am not sure consider that they cure infertility yes at many places so so uh, other than that yes they eat insects which is beneficial to us they eat insect protect the crop frog maintain ecological balance because they serve as an important link of the food web and in some countries the muscular legs of frogs are used by the food python clear yeah? so today we talked about the frog the last topic that is frog is also completed from clear we talked about the morphology the anatomy that that structure the organism which you have seen lot of time in your life so see you guys in the next session hopefully take care and if you like this video do let me know in the comment section is this helpful then also please let me know have a nice day all the very best thank you so much